When I first joined social media, it was because I wanted to make da'wah to a cohort that I was part of and just help them see the beauty of Islam. Um, in that time, I never put my face up and I was just like, absolutely, I would never put anything related to my person online. Um, and I just want to share with you this development because I think it's important for us to think about all the different aspects if anyone's doing public work. Uh, over time, uh, as I was giving lectures, some of my lectures were shared online. And so slowly, my, my, my face is online more and more because people are sharing the lectures. Uh, and then eventually, I started getting messages from sisters who were really struggling with being a visible Muslim. Just very, very, very hard. There was an era, an era in which a lot of social media influencers who had established hijab um, companies and who had been kind of like the pillars of, um, you know, in, encouraging hijab, were going through a difficult time and removing their hijab. And may Allah bless all of them. And hijab is a very, you know, difficult subject in so many ways. Um, so in that time, I was getting so many questions related to just hijab and being public and all of that. And so I started to ask my teachers and um, the, pe the people who mentor me, scholars who mentor me, about how to help women see themselves in different areas. And one of the pieces of advice that I kept receiving was they need to see other Muslim women who are in different spaces. It's one thing to see, you know, um, flowers with a caption, um, and it's another thing for them to see someone who they can relate to. And I have to say that it's... I am physically, like, I don't post my picture unless there's a reason. I don't have, like, it's, it's a personal choice. I just, I don't have, like, photo shoots of myself, like, at the beach and respectfully to anyone who does it. That's just not my style. I try to make sure that what I post is with an intention that it's showing other women or it's talking about an aspect of character. That's a personal thing. Videos, I've talked to Dr. Haitha about in the past. The style of social media right now is videos are here. And it was something I really struggled with because when I did take a video from, you know, like that pillar over there, um, people just felt like they couldn't connect to it. And I would get that feedback. And I want to say that I really dislike being social on social media. I hate having my picture on social media. I hate being in videos on social media. I would completely leave social media if it wasn't for the messages that I receive, specifically from women who talk about how just seeing the visibility has made an impact on their lives. And it's not because I'm actually doing anything good or because I'm worthy of that. It's just literally sometimes someone needs to see someone else to feel like there's community and they just feel that community. And so when I'm sharing with you this advice, I'm sharing it from a place of hating being public. I don't like to be public, and I wouldn't encourage someone to be public, not because it's not helpful. I've told Dr. Rania to get a TikTok. I asked Dr. Haifa to get a TikTok. I think... all of us on TikTok. Okay. Put the camera in our faces, literally. Let me just say, I told everyone, but two of them actually did it. So what that says about them, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. Some of them are the chosen. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Um, TikTok is a beast. <laughs> but the people on TikTok are you, young people. And the types of messages that they're hearing on there are from people who know nothing about Islam, who have 500,000 followers, and who are like, women, you are the majority of hell. And I'm like, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. This is what young people in high school and in college are hearing about Islam. And their rea reality that they're living is so supportive. Be whoever you want, be whatever you want, flaunt what you got, everything you want, you're accepted. But in the Muslim community, no, apps don't be whoever you, no, hide everything about your existence because it's better for women not to exist in the first place. And that, that message is really hard for a young person who's struggling to figure out what their identity is. And so why I'm telling you all of this, because the benefit of being on social media, I have seen it, I'm sure anyone here, Dr. Anya, Dr. Haifa, anyone else, oh, Sada Husai, why didn't I see you, Sada Husai? Sada Husai, may Allah bless them for the, the difficulty of experiencing the reality of social media. It's a beast and there's so much hate and there's so much frustration. The amount of nights I've waken up with anxiety in the middle of the night because my face is online is just so much. But what I've seen is the messages from sisters, especially younger sisters and older sisters, it's just been so worth it. And so why I'm telling you all of that is because 
If you feel like what you want to do is give a particular message and in a field that really needs to be represented, especially from women, especially su su um, supporting other women, I think it's such a critical, critical um, role that no someone needs to take. What I would recommend is number one, make istikhara. I personally make istikhara before basically any post. I make istikhara multiple times before doing things and I ask for advice. I send what I'm about to post to other people, getting their feedback before I do. I think that that shura is really important. And you know, the intention thing. People ask me this, they're like, how can you maintain a sincere intention with like the more and more people that might see, the more and more people that, you know, it's about followers, it's about likes, it's all those things. And like really, I think the best advice that I can give you is be an extremely insecure person because nothing will impact, you will never be good enough. And so that's my advice. Just be really insecure. Make a sahara. <laughs> I like that only the people here are laughing because they know my insecurities. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, at the end of the day, you always think like, this is not coming with me to the grave except to be a punishment unless you do it for the sake of Allah. And if you're not doing it for the sake of Allah, in the end, what's, what does it matter how many followers you have? First of all, Facebook was a big thing. Barely anyone uses it. I, no respect, I mean, all respect to the people who actually do. And now, okay, so then all those people who had all those big followings, now what? Now TikTok is the thing. And 10 years, what it's, what's this kind of, no one's going to remember who we are. This life, this life, probably most of our names are not going to be remembered, except for inshallah, all the sisters, of, uh, everyone in this room, and everyone we love, I mean. But the point is that, I just really have a time for 20 minutes. Oh my gosh, the point, make your make dua, ask a lot of people. May Allah make you sincere and always ask Allah to purify your intentions, to be sincere and think about what you're doing before you do it. Make multiple intentions before you press post because really it doesn't benefit you in the long run for any other reason other than you're doing it for the sake of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all sincere. I mean, also PS, please download Qari'ah, the Women Quran Reciters app. Um, since we're talking about social media, it's on app stores, both of them, Q-A-R-I-A-H, it's free, it's for women, Qariya, the Women Quran Reciters app. I've met so many of you who are like, I love the work you're doing, I'm like, have you downloaded Qariya? They're like, no. I'm like, why? It's free. So, <laughs> All right. Uh, just, just to add one thing. Yes. Jazakillah khair, ya Maryam. This was a, the, one of the best advice I was given 20 years ago. Don't learn to teach. And don't learn to be famous. Don't go on social media if you want to. Don't. Go against your nerves. Because you're going to be drained. You're going to be following you know, how many people. They like me, they don't like me, and the followers. Don't. Wait. If Allah wants to use you through social media, He'll use you. What I just shared with you. The TikTok that now I am on, Allah knows how many people for years they were after me. And I was absolutely against it. You know how Allah made me do it? You've talked to me, but I wasn't convinced. At 16, you know, you know why? Because you always wait till Allah shows you. This is very important. 16-year-old boy, his mother sent me my clip. She said, someone put it on TikTok. And I said, really? It was not us, someone. And I said, and she said, please put yours on TikTok. I said, why? She said, my son really loves it. Khalas. Done. Did you see my point? So for the sister who asked, Allah gave you the knowledge, but he didn't tell you to teach. And he didn't tell you to go on social media yet. He taught you, wait, ask him to show you. Because that's a dangerous trap. Social media, being popular, being famous, don't you think it's easy to be in these shoes? You know what I'm talking about. So wait, if Allah wants to use استعملني ولا تستبدلني Ya Allah, use me and don't replace me. And he will use you the way he thinks is the best for you.